Okay. Hi. Sorry. Rough start today. Didn't expect that to happen. Uh, so I'll probably just have to repeat, but welcome everyone and welcome to the new people. Good to see you. And uh, my assistant will be really upset because uh, she never makes mistakes, as I said. All right, here we go. Okay. So welcome to the challenge to get an agent challenge. Um, nah. All right. So let's talk about, first of all, what an agent is. Uh, an agent is a commission-based salesman. I hope you all know that. Um, but if you don't, I just want to clarify that, that an agent works, makes money if we make money. Um, same with a manager, right? Uh, the difference between an agent and manager is very um, blurred, uh, you know, most of the time what we see with managers these days is they are doing the same exact job that an agent is doing. But uh, traditionally, an agent is supposed to uh, negotiate your contract and submit you for projects. And a manager is supposed to be more in charge of the trajectory of your career and sort of more hands on about where you want to go. Now, we do have people that have those kind of relationships. In fact, I have a young lady that I've been working with who, you know, she doesn't she's with Stuart Talent is her agent. And her she doesn't even talk to Stuart ever because she asked me um, a question about something. And I said, um, I said, well, why don't you just talk to Stuart? She goes, oh, I don't talk to Stuart. I only talk to my manager. So some managers are very like, you know, you only talk to me and I talk to the agent for you. So everybody's experience with agents and managers is different. Um, my personal experience, just so you know, is I've had 24 agents and one, two managers in um, my 40 year acting career. Um, I've had 24 agents and two managers. Now, that's a lot, but also remember that I'm, I lived during the time of AIDS and we lost um, a good 30 to 40% of our agents from, to the disease. So I had a lot of agents that died. Unfortunately, I've had agents that have gone out of business, right? I've had agents that have gone out of business and took my money with them. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if you've been in this business for any amount of time, you've had that same experience, right? Uh, we've all had the experience where we've, um, signed with agents and then we never heard from them again, you know, um, that sort of thing. Right. Um, so we've all had that happen. Um, but, uh, you know, what we're looking for is an, uh, and we're going to talk more about what we're looking for in an agent tomorrow. And I'll probably review what I talked about today because of the bad link that went out. But I am going to give you, because this is being recorded, I am going to give you your homework for today and just know that we'll probably be repeating some of that tomorrow because, because of the bad link that went out. Um, okay. But what I want to focus on today is what you have to offer to an agent. Before we talk about what we want from them, the first part of the challenge is figuring out what we have to offer them, right? So what we have that equals money. So your first homework for today is to, even if you've done this before, even if it's always good to go back and write stuff down, I find like, oh yeah, you know, cause a lot of things we think I learned this about money. I think I know where my money's going, but until I keep track of it, I don't really know, right? It's the same with like everything. So what I want you to write down is all of the things that you have that equal money to an agent. So obviously the first thing is if you have major credits, that's top of the list. If you already have major credits, write those down. If you already have major auditions, maybe you haven't booked anything yet, but you've, you've been in for some major auditions, you've had major auditions, write those down. 
if you um, have some relationships that you've been working on and building, um, that can be worth money to an agent. Because like if I'm an agent and I'm going to sign you and you don't have any credits and you don't have any and you haven't been in any major rooms or had major auditions, the next thing I'm going to know is like who already knows you? right? Who have you worked on getting to know? Um, and that can be casting directors, directors, producers, writers, right? Um, stuff like that. That can be really, really important. So if you've been uh, working on campaigns, getting to know those people, those people should be on your list. And this list that we're building right now today is what we're going to build in the next two weeks to create your pitch to get an agent. So we need to collect this data first from you. The next thing that I want you to write down is any special skills that you have, right? So, you know, especially like any um, weaponry or, you know, um, combat kind of things that you do, um, you know, um, uh, do you sing? Do you ride horseback? Do you speak different languages? If so, how many? Um, do you do a lot of different accents? Do you do impersonations? You know, um, think about this, you know, like uh, we have a, a, a client who's a doctor, a real life doctor. She's gotten cast a lot, you guys, because in her slate, when she auditions for medical roles, she tells them, I'm a real life doctor. Right. And so she I think she's booked. A, she's got a whole reel just of doctor roles on TV. Right. Um, so that does definitely help. Like if you have another skill set, like, you know, if you are um, I had a, a client that was a judge, you know, and we were really doing this whole campaign to get her to be a judge on like law and order and the different procedural dramas, right? Because she knows how to be on the bench. So if you have that skill set, that can be really good. If you have a lot of dance skills, I mean, you know, I had a client that was retired from New York City Ballet. Of course, she was like 30, right? But she was retired from New York City Ballet. And someone in New York told her not to tell people that she was a retired ballerina. First of all, I wanted to slap that person because guess what, you guys? Her first guest star that she booked was a ballerina on a ballet show. And now we have Etoile, which is a casting and shooting in New York, right? And so, you know, I'm sure she's going to be on that show too, right? And so, don't be afraid of your special skills. Um, so special skills, who you um, who you know, who you have relationships with, auditions and bookings. Um, okay, if you're thinking to yourself, "Oh my God, Valerie, I don't have any of that," <laughs> then uh, next we want to um, focus in on who you've studied with or where you studied with. So like if you just got out of a big acting school and you're just starting out, don't be afraid to say, I'm just starting out and I just got out of such and such acting school where I worked on these roles and I studied with these teachers or I've been studying with you know these, these teachers or whatever, like that's another thing that can equal money, okay? Um, and I guess the last thing really is a bit of your brand, a bit of what kind of roles that you tend to book, right? An exclamation, explanation of your brand, right? So um, that can be really, really, um, first of all, it can be entertaining, to the person that's watching your pitch video, right? Um, you know, it can be a wink and a nod, but also I think like, you know, if you are, um, you know, if you are really funny, make sure they know that. Because, you know, the best piece of advice I ever got from an old actor in my very first acting job was he was smoking cigarettes and he's like, Hey, kid, if you can be funny, you should be funny. 
And he was right. Like when a lot of my friends were sitting around not working, I was working because I was funny. Right. And so, you know, sometimes they're looking, you know, if it's a really, really good agent and they're thinking about like what spots they need filled, maybe they need that like annoying next door neighbor or as, you know, Lauren and I talked about with her brand, you know, I can't tell you how many Karens I've auditioned for in the last four years, right? Ever since Karen became a thing, if you audition for sitcoms a lot, you know that in every sitcom right now, there's a Karen, every single one of them. So if you can be a Karen and you're funny, you should let people know that because listen, every sitcom I have auditioned for in the last four years, I've auditioned for a Karen, which used to be commonly referred to as the nosy next door neighbor, which is pretty much in every sitcom as well. But now it's being called a Karen, right? And so again, like the more that you can be like, this is the role that I knock out of the park. Now, you guys, versatile is a bad word. It's great in acting class. You know, in an acting class, your acting teacher is going to, if you're really good at comedy, a good acting teacher isn't going to give you comedy scenes. They're going to look for what is weak about you, like what needs strengthening, like your vulnerability or your anger or whatever it is, right? And they're going to give you scenes that lift that up. Do not get confused with acting school with your acting business. They're two different things. With your acting business, if you, a confused mind doesn't buy. A confused mind doesn't buy. That means if you tell an agent, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. What they hear is, oh uh, no. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for this, right? I'm not looking for versatility. No agent or no customer is looking for your customers being casting directors, directors, producers, and writers. No one out there is looking for versatility. What they're looking for is this one thing that they want right now. So it's really important for you to get really clear about what you do better than everyone else. Now, that doesn't mean that if you sign with an agent and they say, uh, and you have your main shot that you think best represents you, kind of like your logo, right? Which is in your signature line, which is maybe um, on your IMDb Pro, which is on your LinkedIn, which is on your Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or YouTube, you know, every place that we have our face, you probably have that one picture that you use over and over again. That's your main picture, right? However, like if you sign with a really good agent and they go, oh, I also need this picture and that picture and this picture to do my job. That's fine. That's fine. But you don't put everything out on display at the same time. Right? Think about how you shop. When you're walking down the street and you see a boutique, right? And you're like, oh, I'm going to go in there. It's usually because you see one outfit in the window or one necklace in the window and you think you like it. And then you go in there and they have a range of things. But usually they don't have, usually they don't have um, mismatch. My husband's a chef. So we always make fun of the restaurants that you look at the menu and you're like, what are you? Like, are you an Italian restaurant? Are you a Mexican restaurant? Are you a Thai restaurant? Like, what are you, right? And usually to foodies like myself and my husband, that means it's not a very good restaurant. If they have, the only place that gets away with that is Cheesecake Factory. And I don't know for you guys that are coming from the UK, if you know what Cheesecake Factory is, but Cheesecake Factory is one of those places in America where they have the biggest menu of all. And it's like got every kind of food. But if you want Thai food, you don't go to the Cheesecake Factory. You go to a Thai restaurant. You go to the Cheesecake Factory for your, mo for your mother on Mother's Day, right? That's when you go to that place. And then you can have whatever kind of food you want. However, it's not the best right? It's just, it's not always the best of everything, right? It's like, it's not the best Thai food or the best Mexican food. It's, it's got a little bit of everything. So think about that. And I'll tell you one more story about that. 
there was a man that developed a bug spray that ki that killed all bugs. And he thought, oh my God, I'm going to get rich now. I developed this bug spray that's going to kill all bugs. He put it on the, the, the shelves of the stores. No one bought it. And what he realized was that when people are going to the store to get a bug spray, you're going to kill one kind of bug. Usually you have either a cockroach problem, an ant problem, a fly problem. You have some kind of bug problem. So when you're going down the aisle, you're looking for that bug spray. So when you see a bug spray that kills all bugs, you're like, no. Because in your head, you're like, uh, I need this thing that kills exactly what I need it to kill. Right? So just remember that. You got to give us a little brand and you don't want us to come away from the brand going, huh? Right? So we'll talk about that a little later in the process. And for you guys that don't know, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is the Actor Pro Expo. It's a virtual event. It takes place live in London, but it's also virtual this year. And I have a booth there. And this is the booth. This is the same link you're going to be on every day. And we're going to be open 9 to 4 on Eastern Time on Thursday, 9 to 5 on Friday and Saturday. This is going to be open. So when you guys come to the challenge, um, it'll, it'll already be going. And on Thursday, we're going to talk about building a pitch. Uh, Friday, we're going to talk about working globally. And Saturday, we're going to be talking about pitching yourself to customers. But when you're here, I mean, I obviously won't, you know, I'm not going to be talking about that the whole day because people are going to be asking a lot of questions. We're going to be talking a lot about brand and we will be sending out our branding document to you guys. If you guys are like really freaked out about brand, don't worry about it. We'll get to that. But for today, your homework is to write a list of what you have that equals money. Okay. Um, okay. So sorry about what happened. What I would like to do is take some time to answer some of your questions. So if you have a question, please raise your virtual hand and I will get to you as many as I can. And as we go along in this challenge, the next two weeks, it'll get crazy. Everyone will be asking questions, but Welcome to the first day. So don't be shy. Come on down. Hi, Rydis. <laughs> Good to see you. You as well. Good to see you. Who has a question? Anyone? Don't be shy. No? Come on. Someone has a question. No? Anything. Anything about agents? We do... In case you don't know, we do have a pitch fest happening July 28th. Uh, some of you already have tickets for that. Uh, we have an amazing group of agents that are going to be there. We're going to have a West Coast room, an East Coast room, an international room. If you are already got a ticket for that event and you would like to be put, you, you know, I'm going to judge you by where you live according to the phone number that you registered with by putting you in the right room. But if you're like, oh, I my I have a New York phone number, but I really live in London, please email support at actorsfasttrack.com and say, I would like to be put in the international room. Okay, let them know what room you want to be in. Um, and uh, we will make sure, but don't email me, email support at actorsfasttrack.com. She's going to have a, She's going to throw up when she wakes up and realize she sent the wrong thing. Poor thing. Yes, Baya. Is it Baya? Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, how nice are you? I'm fine. Thank you. How about you? Oh, you're in France. Yes. Oh, do you know our French clients? Uh, not at all uh, in this room. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We have two, um, two clients right now in, in Paris. Um, ah, I know Miquan. Oh, Sorry. you know Miquan. Oh, yes, good. Oh, good. Okay, good. What's your question? Um, I was wondering about uh, you know when you said um that we have to talk about our major credits. 
um, if a credit sits on IMDb, it's considered as major or not necessarily? Well, I mean, if no one's ever heard of it, then, but you can make, <laughs> this, I'm going to sound like my daddy here. You can make, you can make shit shine. You know what I'm saying? So you can yeah. make, you can make a credit sound better. At, you know, I just was part of this amaz amazing indie film. If there were no stars in it, then you don't say that, but you say amazing indie film where I played and you can give a description of the character you played, which could also double as your brand. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So you could say, I just finished this major indie film that's gonna uh that's gonna be entered in all these festivals. I'm really excited about it. And I played this character where I, you know, was a, a mean, angry girl that really had a heart of gold. You know, I'm just giving you an example, right? <laughs> um, and those are the kind of characters I tend to play. So within that one sentence, you've told me that you're working in indie films and you understand what your brand is. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, you have a great look, by the way. Uh, oh. Yeah, I love the fro and the hair. And um, so you speak French and you speak English. What else do you speak? Uh, Arabic, because my mother is from Algeria and also Spanish. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so make sure you say that in your pitch. Okay, I will. Okay. Um, so we have some really good people in the international room. We have um, we have someone from Bohemia Group. If you don't know them, first of all, I just want to say this. So many agents and managers have gotten left behind because the industry is changing so quickly that you have to be an amazing pivoter to keep up. I'm an amazing pivoter. That's why my business is still open, right? And that, and literally, I just want to tell you guys that. 12 years ago when I started this business, 90% of my actors were getting agents and getting auditions. 10% were creating content and making money that way. It is now exactly switched, right? So understanding that there's a ton of different streams of revenue, a lot of these things are not being cast with agents. Agents are losing money and they haven't quite figured out how to bring in all those new streams of revenue, whether it's user generated content, TikTok, Instagram, vertical content. These are audio books. These are ways that actors are making six figures without an agent, right? So, so what I'm looking for when I'm getting agents and managers to come to my pitch fest are people that are thinking outside the box that see what's happening to our industry. And I have a few of them coming, one of which is union management. They're out of London. They're really good but he gets it, like he gets it, right? Another one is Bohemia Group. They're international and the agent that represents people in Germany, but also she represents my client in London. She's a manager. She's going to be part of our pitch fest. So I always am trying to find representatives that are, think the way I think, because so many of these people, you guys, are really floundering right now. And Abrams closed this last year. We're going to see more agencies close. We're going to see that. So it's really important for us to learn how to be our own agent more than ever before. But I'm just letting you know that those are the kind of people that are going to be at our pitch fest because I insist on it. And everyone that's going to come to our pitch fest are people that are actually looking for actors. They're not just there to get a paycheck. They do get paid by me, but they're not, but they better not just be there to get a paycheck or I will never have them back again. And they love our clients. They love you guys. They love pitches. Um, so great. So we're going to work on these pitches as we go the next two weeks. Yes, Rachel. Hi. 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 Um, so I have, I have a high level producer credit. And right. I, I never know whether or not to mention that because I'm not looking for a rep as a producer. I'm looking for a rep as an actor and I'm not really planning to do more producing in the near future anyway. Um, but it, it still sort of adds credibility. So I'm never sure whether or not to mention that alongside other things, but. Okay, so my feeling about that is that if, especially if, if, um, if if I was 
pitching to the people that I'm going to have, um, I would say the producer credit because the reason, the reason I would do that is because you want someone to take you on that understands the entire 360 of Rachel, mm -hmm. right? And someone that's going to take on the entire 360, like someone like an entertainment lab, right? Like an, inter like entertainment lab's been at my event several times. And I'll give you an example. I have a client who got signed by entertainment lab and they had this idea to write this show, right? And they did an amazing pitch deck. It's an amazing idea. And entertainment lab is willing to pitch her show for her. Mm. because entertainment lab understands that actors now are writers, producers, directors, and actors and social media influencers. Right. And, and they understand that. So they have the ability, if you come to them and say, you know, I'm going to produce this. Um, I will give you such and such a commission. If you go out and negotiate with and get me these three actors for my thing or, mm -hmm. or, you know, and you might never need them as a producer. You might not need them as a producer, but so we have this other guy, Rachel, that we work with a lot. He is, was an actor. He still is in Canada, but during, um, during COVID, he decided to pitch a show to Amazon. Amazon picked the show up. Here's what yeah. he did. That was smart. Rachel. He went to his theatrical agent and he said, hey, I'm going to pitch a show to Amazon. Do you want a part of it? And they said, that's going to ruin your career. You're stupid to do that. He's like, OK, then sign this document that says that you don't want a commission. Oh. They signed it. Rachel, the show's now worth $10 million. Oh, my gosh. So he learned in that instance how to negotiate for himself. And now he does it all the time. So if he now he's one of those people that if he books a big thing because he's got three shows now that he's sold and he books a big thing because people know him or were guests on his show, you know, like Natasha Henstridge was a guest on his show. They became friends. She put him in the movie that she was producing and starring in or his, her, his agent had nothing to do with that. So he went to the age, his agent and he said, listen, I'll give you 5% if you negotiate my, my, uh, you know, uh, transportation and my housing and negotiate that. And so she said, okay, she went for it. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that's why it's really important now for us to become good negotiators. So I, I think that you can say, I'm a producer as well. I have a major producer credit and I'm, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in that part of my career too, because, because I know some of the people that are going to be there, they might be interested in, if you were doing that, but I think that you would get the kind of agent or manager that you need. If you said everything about you, that's good. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Hey, John. Hi, Valerie. Hi, uh, how good. are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. Um, follow, been listening just now very constructively to what you've been saying to everybody else. I mean, I'm an all-round content creator. So, for example, I do podcasts and I'm YouTubing. I was in a horror film last year which played at the London Fright Fest called Werewolf Santa, where I actually played one half of a dogging couple. So it's like an IMDb credit, okay? Yeah. So I'm I'm in it for about 45 seconds, but essentially you were talking about IMDb credits and, and how to say yourself better and stuff like that. So I've just started a two-year MA in Write for Script and Screen as well, which is a two-year course. So I've got dance skills. I've got kickboxing skills. I've got all kinds of skills. And you're talking about versatility and to avoid that. What would yeah, you suggest? But I don't mean that. I mean, versatility in what you're selling. Like, when you started talking, John, and you said that character that you played in the horror movie, like, I'm like, oh, my God, this guy has a sense of humor. He's funny. I get who you are, like, immediately. Right. Right. I'm talking about the, someone that comes on and says, you know, I'm strong. I'm weak. I'm, I'm this. I'm that. Like, nothing really comes together. Now, you can be strong and weak, but you've got to fit them together like a yin and a yang. So mm -hmm. the person on the other end isn't confused. 
Okay. But, so my yeah. yeah. So Go my ahead. question is primarily if I've got that credit now on IMDb, which it is on there, you can look at Werewolf Santa and see it. It was an indie film that I worked on. Um, how do you I mean, is that a good thing to pitch? I mean, should I yeah. you know and um and and in terms of sort of presenting it to um you know applying it i mean what do i say i was in this you know it's it's um it's it's i'm at an unusual position at the moment because i've got like people are saying to me i should get representation in some shape or form for the content creation but the acting is what i'm after and um like i've just there's a there's a company called trendy um there's a company trendy a company called trendy who's actually just signed me to some acting stuff anyway i've got a um i've got a photo shoot on saturday with a company called new idol models in london so in a way the momentum's starting so that's really what i'm concerned about is which what i should you know where i should start and how do i singularly pitch myself okay so number one, always go where the love is. So if you're getting love in a certain arena, always lean into that, right? Like whatever that is. I think that you should pitch all of the things that you said about yourself were fantastic. And the way that you deliver them in your uh, quirky, fun, British way, I think you should do that. You say like, so I'm super busy. I just finished this. I just finished that. Now, if you're going to pitch yourself, you need to, to, to be clear about what you're looking for. Um, in the in the international room, for instance, with our pitch fest, there's going to be a lot of managers. So I think, you know, um, if you're, you know, depending on like if you're signed to something exclusive or maybe you're just signed commercially, be really clear what you are asking for as far as representation always. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I'm looking for a manager to uh, to work more theatrically or I'm looking for an agent to work more commercially, right? Like always be really clear about what you're asking for. But as far as like all the things about you, I think they all equal one thing, which is this quirky, fun guy, right? And so I think that you can craft the pitch and like, I just finished this werewolf movie where I did this. And Usually I tell people if you're only on in film for 15 seconds, not to say that, but the way that you said it was hilarious, okay. right? So I'm only in it for 15 seconds, but anyway, and then I'm also doing this <laughs> and I'm also doing that and I have this many followers. And so this is what I've got going on. I'd love to have a meeting with you and see how you can fit into the, the mm. equation kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that, I think that's really what it makes sense. Cause I'm now at a point where, because I trained as an actor, for example, about five years back in the late nineties, and again, I never because of one thing or another circumstance in life, I never really got around to it. But there's a part of me now that's keen to sort of segue back into it and sort of, you know, as a as if I've just left drama school. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think that answers my question. So thanks for that, Valerie. I mean, I I will take that on board and I'll start dr writing some stuff down. So yeah, sounds good. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um. Good job. All right. Hey, Emily. Hey, so Chris, a quick question about um, my, my pitch and everything. I know I Scott had commented on my pitch in the client's Facebook group that I should add that I sing and I write my own songs and I'm currently recording my debut song at a recording studio. How would I incorporate that into my pitch? And should I also add that I've got a table read coming up in August for my TV pilot? How would I add all of that into what I've already got? Well, I, I need to look at it. Is it in school? Um, yes, I did add it to school as well. I did. Okay. Yes. Well, let me look at it, Emily. And how long is it running right now? Um, I think it's about 45 seconds, I think. Well, then you seconds? have time to, to fit that in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you are just like John. You have a lot going on. And you're you're so much of a creative you know, you sing, you write, you act, you, you know, comedy, you know, all the stuff that you do, which is really, really all under the umbrella of quirky, funny girl, right? Like you are, you know, offbeat, funny, peculiar, all those things we talked about in the past about you. And so 
you know, I think it, you, the way that you deliver it is really important to allow your quirk to shine, your freak flag to shine. That's really important mm -hmm. for you because we really want to feel that just like we do when we see your social media and stuff like that. So we really want to see all of that in the whole package of Emily Carpenter, mm -hmm. right? When you're right. So, so just fit it in to be, you know, it almost can be like, also remember this, Emily. Oh, and I'm also this. And then you're ready to go. Oh, and I'm doing this, right? Like right. that could be like comedy, you know, okay. like I'm exiting and I come back on. Oh, oh yeah. I almost forgot. Right. Make right. it really funny. Don't just say Could you're make funny. It funny. Like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I mean, ultimately when you're pitching, whether it's for a specific project and you're pitching to a director, a producer, writer, or casting director, or you're pitching to get an agent on video, it's always entertaining, you guys, because we're entertainers. So even if it's dramatic, it's still entertaining. You know, it's got to have an, a flair to it a little bit. So don't be afraid of that, of, of being entertaining or, you know, uh, I don't know about you guys, but recently I, I just had a couple of auditions for TV shows. So that's exciting because that's happening again. And, um, you know, I always try to be really just myself and real, you know, not stiff at all in the slate. And the other thing is a slate is an opportunity for you if there's a connection because we can't go in the fucking room anymore. Sorry. But like it's like I, I had an audition for the minutes on Broadway and I know Tracy Letts, right, mm -hmm. the author. And so I said, I said, hey, Tracy. I think this just overtook. Killer Joe for me as my favorite play because he knows Killer Joe is my favorite play. But I, when I read the minutes, I loved it. Right, and so I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you for letting me audition for this. I said that in the slate because I know he's gonna see it. Right, and so I think like you can take chances. Like, like I told you, my client who's a doctor says I'm a doctor in her slate, for real, and I practice medicine here. Right, so. Um, just remember to be as authentic as possible, entertain and have fun when you're doing a straight to camera pitch. Don't be stiff. Just like you shouldn't be stiff in your auditions either. Okay. Awesome. Hey, Kim. Hey there. Hi. Um, I have a couple of quickie questions, but a, first of all, are we going to be using the same link every single solitary day? This yes, particular? yes, and she'll tell you that. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I keep. Thank angry. you, Lauren. She just put it in the. Uh, yeah, in the chat. it's the same one, and you're going to get it again tomorrow, and you're going to probably tonight. You're going to get an apology from my assistant. She, uh, so she'll send it, and she'll send it out the right one, and make sure everyone has it. Oh, great. I just thought I'd ask it. Yeah. We all have had technical issues, so that's no Girl. biggie. <laughs> it's just part of, it's part of the new life. Yes. Um, secondly, is this also pertaining to live theater as well as? Um, yeah, I actually have a client who um, we play uh, in our, in our group, in our client base, we play uh, uh, what's called the fan club game. And so everyone's playing a game. Like I will get cast in a speaking role that I get paid for on TV. So I have a client that's playing, I will get cast in a Lort A or Lort B play in the next six months. And in her pitch that she's put together for the pitch vest, she says, she says something to the fact that uh, I'm looking to book Lort A, Lort B theater right now. And as you know, a Lort A pays $2,000 a week for, you know, eight weeks. Uh, more than you're going to get if your client books a co-star. She goes, I'm good at math, <laughs> you know, or something to that effect. It's very cute the way she does it. So absolutely. And in, in um, you know, absolutely. I mean, you know, how, a lot of people with theater right now are auditioning on online because uh, and, and, and self-taping we've had to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm also started doing web series, which was, I started doing film and I actually liked it. So I was kind of surprised and it was like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> so are you in New York? 
No, actually now I, I'm originally from New York, you can tell. Um, thank you. Um, but I'm actually in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, now. there's a lot of theater there. I have a yeah. lot, over the years, I've had a lot of clients that make good money in theater there. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, we like to call them the Fab 15 because there's just like 15 people who consistently work when you're a local theater person and then everybody else is like, no. I'm but You know, Kim, I just want to urge you to think about now that we are putting ourselves on tape for everything, that there is no reason because you were here in New York and you probably know a lot of the casting directors and you probably know a lot of the artistic directors at the regional theaters. If they, if you catch on to a play, you know, I used to chase plays. The first 20 years of my career, I made a living doing regional theater, some off-Broadway and commercials. And then I moved, when I was 41, I moved to LA and then I did all my TV and film then. So like, you know how it is. If you are, if you've been in the regional theater world at all, you know, all the artistic directors, it's a very small world. So, and what I used to do is chase plays right? Like okay. if there was a play that I was right for, you know, if there's a play that I see off Broadway, I just saw a play called uh, Sutton State. It came out of Chicago. It's got four characters and it's yes. one set. They're yeah. going to do it at every regional theater in, in America. And there's a bunch of rules in that, that I, there, two of the women are right for me. Right. So if I was chasing that play right now, I would just go to every regional theater that's doing it and I would send them an audition tape. Right. Like you can now it doesn't matter where you live. So just think about that. Like just because you're in San Francisco doesn't mean that you can't submit your tape for Dallas Theater Center. Yeah, that's true. Swing State. Thank you, Wendy. What? Swing State. Wendy said swing state. <laughs> Okay. That's the play. Swing state. So thank you. It's only, it's only four characters and it's um and it's one set. They're gonna do it in every regional theater. You know, anytime they have one set and four characters, that's like a no-brainer. Financially, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, the last question was I don't know, this is really weird. We are all sometimes now doing this. It's like I'm still doing Zoom theater, which is really weird. I got hired to do a show that was based in Seattle of a Midsummer Night's Dream, but where the hell do you put that in your resume and in life? Well, you can, I mean, Zoom theater still goes under theater and I would probably just put it under theater, but I might put in parentheses Zoom. Not that we really have any kind of paper resume anymore. The only time anyone's using a paper resume is for theater. Um, like if someone called me in for a play right now and I had to go in for an audition and they asked me for a picture and resume, I don't even know what the hell I do because my last set of headshots, I didn't get printed. I'd have to find my, my resume on, <laughs> you know, like I would be like, what? <laughs> you know? So I think that I would put it under theater. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Baya, I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer Grace because you went before, but let me see what Grace has to say. And then if I have time, I'll jump to you. Yeah, Grace. Hi, Valerie. Hi. Hi. Um, hi, I'm just thinking about how I should think more about my brand for film and television. So a little background of mine. I come from a theater background. I played several leads for Lord B theaters, regional theaters, and now I'm trying to make the pivot into film and TV. And I've played a lot of leads in theater, including ingenues, including, you know, the quirky, awkward girl. But I'm now confused because I've played such a diverse number of roles. I'm not sure how to find my brand or what's the best way about going, finding my brand and being specific when I pitch to agents in film in television. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I bet you, if we looked at all of those roles and we uh, filtered them, that we would find some common denominators there. Um, it you might you might not think so right now looking at it, but the first question I'm always going to ask you is: Tell me the role that you knocked out of the park that you were like, "I'm great." What was that role? Well, this is crazy. I was gender bending, so I played um, Wilhelm in. Um, oh God, I just blanked. But I gender bent and I did a lot of movement um, and I did a lot of clowning in that, which is so different from another 
people love me and which is Molly and Peter and the star catcher uh-huh. play like, you know, she's 14 years old. Um, but she has a sense of bossiness to her. Um, um, she's, I mean, she has a higher social, social standing than other people. And I feel like the roles that I'm getting cast in commercials, for example, tend to be, you know, I would say a higher socioeconomic status. So I don't know if that's pertinent. Right, but I'm looking for the essence, mm-hmm. not so, not the outside. Okay. Like, like if I look at Meryl Streep, mm-hmm. there's an essence of entitlement in every fucking role she plays. Mm-hmm. Even if it's like, you know, the dingo ate my baby all the way to Sophie's Choice. I can only choose one baby to like Devil Wears Prada. There's that same entitlement in all three of those roles. Right. It's it, it like, so I'm, I'm dripping it down to what is the essence. Uh-huh. So like my essence is bully. <laughs> right. Like I, like there's a bully in pretty much everything I've ever done in 40 years. Right. Right. So um, bossy bully, like she's always there. Right. So there feels like a little bit of um, it's so funny you said gender bending because I was thinking of um, Ellen Page before she was Elliot, before he was Elliot. And I was thinking about that, you know, that thing that she had in Juno, which was like, I felt like before you like as you were saying that I was like oh my god she's a little bit like Ellen Page like she has this little bit of like um unflappable maybe or something there that so Mm -hmm. I I would urge you to stop don't look at the outside as much as look at like what is the essence of you that always shows up or that is um Try to try to get it down to that. And it might help you to go go to my website and download the we're going to send it out, but go download the build your brand PDF and start filling that out because that's going to ask you questions. that's going to help you to start to discern that. OK, OK. Um, so what we're looking for is like. Right, like you have a lot of products, you know, you played a lot of roles Right. But if I put them all on one menu, what would be the name of your restaurant? Right. right? Because like if I if I go to Tender Greens in L.A., right, if I go to Tender Greens, I know exact I know what's probably going to be on there. Now, they do have some chocolate brownie stuff on there, but they don't have like processed foods there. Right. So there's a limit. They don't have everything. But their menu also almost equals that, the title, if that makes sense. For sure. Actually, this is really helpful because now that I'm thinking about the reviews or what people have written about me, you know, some of the verbs I remembered was like, or adjectives were tenacious, strong-willed. So you go. Yeah. Those are what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, Not, not the outside, not, I can play a doctor, a nurse, a this or that. You know, but like, what is the thing that you bring to the table, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because upper class, yeah, I can play upper class, right? You know, um, I tend to play lower class more than upper class if you add up all the characters I've ever played. But I played some upper class, right? But but they're always like bully. There, it's like there's always a bully there. I'm yeah, it's so a quality funny. about you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm getting okay. there. Okay. Thank good. You. Awesome. Bye uh, real quick. And then we'll call it a day. Uh, yes. I have two quick questions. Okay. Um, so you said that in the international room, um, it will be maybe union management. I have checked that I saw that it's, um, it's an agency from London, but okay. actually, I already have an agency in London, but they are more into commercials, but I'm looking to get more into uh, uh, fictional stuff. So is, uh, do I have to quit my uh, agency before getting in the room? Or uh, it's okay to say I have an agency right now, but I'm looking more for um, f- um, jobs in film industry. Uh, so I'm up to quit my agency or it's weird. Well, listen, I personally feel like if um, 
if you're going out and looking for a new agent and you're signed in a contract with an agent, that's probably not smart because they most likely they will find out, right? Um, uh, just to like to look around. It really depends on what your contract is and what they're getting for, for you. If you feel like your agency is only getting you a certain kind of auditions and you want them to be getting another kind of audition, then instead of looking for another agent before you do that, you should have a conversation with your current agent and say, okay. I want to do this, this, and this. Are you available or able to get me that? Okay. And if they're not saying, okay, here's the deal. I need to go find an agent that can get me those things. I would like to stay with you theatrically. Is that going to be, or whatever they're getting for you. I would like to stay with you for that. Are you, are you okay if I go out and look at some other people or pitch myself? Okay, cool. I would Thank always you. start with the people that you have. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. All right. So everyone make a list of what you have that's worth money, post it in the Facebook group. Um, and we will take a look at it tonight and give you feedback. But, you know, I just look, don't, Whatever you have questions about, do you think this is worth money? I just put it down on the list. I would rather have more than, you know, you being really careful. And I'm not sure this is, this credit is enough or, you know, this is enough or whatever. Uh, so sorry about the uh, link, snaffle, snaffle. Uh, when my assistant wakes up in the Philippines, she's going to be mortified. You'll all get your email tonight with this recording and the homework and we will be uh, sending it, you out. It is the same link every day. We will make sure you have the correct link tomorrow. Thank you so much for being here. Bye, everyone.